But if you don't want to forget, I've already, I don't need them. As he was leaving, somebody said, Olga, can I talk to you in a minute? And that person said, how much do you need for the sheep? He said, if you can afford 30 pieces of silver, give it to me. And the person brought out 30 pieces of silver, tried giving me 30 pieces of silver. Don't just throw it there, don't need it, throw it there. And those sheep became his. Everything about the sheep. May God open your eyes to understand the deep revelation where we are in now. And God said, Sheep, everything about you, bye bye. I don't have anything with you forever and ever. This is Joseph, according to the scripture, thinking by the wisdom of God. The same young man still said, Oh God, one more thing. One more thing. You said you don't need a sheep again. You don't need anything about the sheep again. He said, with due respect, sir, I will make the sheep clean and I will hand it over to you. Don't be angry any longer with them. Don't look at their sins and mistakes any longer. Just go relax. Leave the job for me. I'm going to turn them around and make them even better. For greater things shall ye do if you continue in my teaching. And God said, Who are you? And God said, what, Who are you? What kind of man are you? He said, I've finished with you, God. Go and rest. Wait for me. I shall return with a better version of this ship. That's exactly what is written in that Isaiah. Now listen, now it was like acting. But prophet Zachariah was showing us what was happening in heaven. <laughs> God got angry and said, never again. And somebody stood and said, how much do you need for this? And Jesus came in human form, listen very well. He went out, he picked everybody, all the 12 disciples. Till Jesus, till the day he was crucified on the Calvary, did he accept any resignation letter from any of his team? Listen, 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 we are going somewhere now. Did Jesus receive any resignation letter from any of the people he, who, who it wasn't those people that chose him, right? It was Jesus that appointed them, right? And he gave them office. What does that mean? That they are representing Jesus in every corner. Does that make sense? Was there any time the relationship between Jesus and Judah, Judas Iscariot, was severe or gave him resignation letter and say, you are no more representing uh, this uh, this institution in financial matters. Was there any time like that? So it means everything Judas was doing was still <laughs> the money back of Jesus. Is that true? Zachariah acted it. Judas now said, I'm going to sell my master. You can't buy him. But the man you are looking for to use his blood to save the life of the whole world, I will sell it to you in 30 pieces of silver. <laughs> in our contemporary, he forged the document. He signed the document. And he said, okay, we'll give you the money. Pam. When they gave him the money, that was the word of Jesus at that time. And he said, how are you going to deliver your goods? How are you going to deliver our goods? He said, the person I will kiss is your goods. And he came and kissed him. And they took him. That was the word of Jesus at that time. He came so low. He didn't go 
considered himself to be God any longer. He brought himself so low and men he created marched on him. Why? To save those sheep. Was it Jesus that sold himself for 30 pieces of silver? Yes, legally. Because that was, he appointed him. He gave him appointment. Discuss on my behalf. The Bible says Judas was buying things for the disciple. Was it not true? He was holding the money back. So you see, it's a crime. 30 pieces of silver. That was the same thing. It's a cry, and when he gave it to God, God said, No, throw it there. The 30 pieces of silver. He has sold it. God did not receive the money. Are you, am, are you, am I saying the truth that the whole Bible is saying one thing? I'm, I'm telling you, as Zachariah is saying the same thing, Matthew said. Matthew was real life, real movie. But Zachariah was a Nigerian movie. Shadow. Shadow. Nah. It doesn't make sense. When the man gave God the 30 pieces of silver, did God, he didn't accept, he said, throw it here. Now what happened? When they brought back the 30 pieces of silver, when Judas brought back the 30 pieces of silver to give those representing God, God did not send those high priests. He has sacked them. They were still acting on behalf of God. They said, we don't need the money, throw it there. And Judas dropped the money. They said, this is the blood money, so let's use it to buy where God got <laughs> <laughs> he is it to buy a place where people are buried. Right. In Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 27. Help me, Holy Ghost. Mm. I didn't prepare this message, but I just was asking God. What are we supposed to learn? What is supposed to be the reason for this season? Leviticus 27, if I'm not mistaken, 4. 4. The whole Bible, the whole book is saying one thing. Can you read it? Leviticus chapter 27, verse 4. A female, then thy estimation shall be thirty shekels. And let me read another version. And if is a female from twenty to sixty years old, then your value is to be thirty shekels. According to the shekel of the sanctuary. Now listen, that's 30 pieces of silver. <laughs> that is 30 pieces of silver. Do you know what he was saying? If you are buying a woman, the church is the wife of Jesus. He bought it with 30. Jesus was sold. That was what the money. Then Jesus bought up. A whole of you, how much are you going to give me yourself? 30 pieces of silver. Whether I eat you or kill you or use you anything, what I spent was how much? 30. What I lost was 30. Leviticus says, if you're buying a woman, if you want to buy God's church, 30 pieces of save. Third. What is the reason for this season? So many people are planning the biggest party. Oh, may the Lord have mercy. We are not traditional church. We move by the power of the Holy Ghost. Watch out when men leader 
is established. Youth leader is established. Women leader is established. And I see them function. I will show you. We we'll move to another level. Not me trying to move people around when there is no. We are the, the level we are in now is to women leader uh, the, 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 the women department to be. I'm not. I'm not interested in any other thing until I see these three arms of the church grow. If they don't grow, we are doing nothing. You know what I like God about? You listen to what I'm going to teach you. Sorry, God, sit down. Now let's go to Isaiah. What is the reason for this season? Isaiah, chapter 9. You see, people only read when they want to read Isaiah. They read the one that makes them happy. Some people are planning big party. Some people are, you know, even some ladies are planning to disvergent themselves during Christmas. <laughs> oh my God, forgive. Some boys are saying, ah, foolish, foolish things. A precious season like this. That was why when I started, I told you Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. It's just that we Christians have decided to use 25th to honor his birth. I didn't get the point. Don't make it an idol. It's a season to remember. It's a season to take a decision to serve God better. It's a season to remember what Jesus has done. And what we are talking about, it didn't just start from New Testament. That was the message of the Old Testament. How do you explain the New Testament and the Old Testament and the era we are in right now? The Old Testament was the promise. The New Testament was what? The way to the promise. You can't recover until you discover. What you lost will remain lost until you discover where it is. So the New Testament is the kingdom of God. The New Testament is the way to the kingdom of God. And the era we are in now, which is the time of the Holy Ghost, is the manifestation of the kingdom of God. That was why Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, verse 1, He said, You that are watching me now, some of you will not die until you see the kingdom come. The kingdom of God is an atmosphere, the kingdom of heaven. Is a place, the throne of God. The kingdom of God is Christ. If any man be in Christ, if any man be in the kingdom of God, in the Old Testament it was used, Garden of Eden. If anyone be, that was why immediately Adam sinned against God, the Garden of Eden disappeared. The Garden of Eden disappeared from the earth. Science has found everything they have found. The value of the money that we used to build the Solomon's, uh, uh, Solomon, I mean church, Solomon, uh, God's church sanctuary. No house has ever worked that. They have found the ark. They have found even Jesus' throne, everything, everything. But they have not discovered the garden of Eden. Because it's not, it's an atmosphere. It's called the kingdom of God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have, behold, all things have passed away. And he is a new creature. And how did all these things start? Who was slain even before the foundation of the earth? Praise the Lord. Church, I remember this. Why is it that Jesus came? What was the reason for this season? What was the reason why he came? Are you there? Isaiah. Chapter 9. Let's start from verse 5. I'm going to read. I have seven versions here. I read King James first. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Listen. Every battle of a warrior is with confused noise. And garments rolled in blood. There's confusion when there is battle. Garments, 
people are being killed. That's what it means. Now listen to it. But something heavy is coming. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. No, 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 no. God was saying, do you know the most accurate prophets? The, if you want to, the most accurate prophets in the Bible. David and Isaiah. They, they, they mention them, they tell you what they are saying. They exactly. Isaiah said, God was talking to him. Yes, the battle of a warrior, a time of confusion, blood shall grow. Is it not the suicide bombing? That's a type. That's the type of what God was telling Isaiah. He said, for every battle of a warrior, it's with a confused noise and garments rolled in blood. What happened in France is this. Church, listen to what I'm saying. But God said now again, but the one that will come if I don't intervene. The war that will come if I don't intervene, it shall come with the it means body. It, it, this one you have a little, but this one is no confusion. It will burn everything. The good, the bad, the ugly. Let's go to Malacca. Let's go to Malacca. I told you the whole Bible is talking about one thing. And I've been putting the Old Testament. Permit me to say this. Australian Christians, they don't do much with the Old Testament. I'm among the people that have met them to understand that the Bible, Old Testament, is the promise. And I'm so grateful to God for that. Let's go to Malachi and see something there. The battle, every battle of a warrior comes with a confused noise. And garments are rolled in blood. But if I don't intervene, if I don't intervene, are you in the Amalekah? Chapter 4. Yeah. From verse 4. To 6 years. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, okay, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, okay, with a status and judgment. Verse 5 Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great prophet. Who, who was this Elijah? Who was this Elijah? Go that place, go Matthew 11. Verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the, thy way before thee. Continue. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born Rich, of rich nine. But what went ye out for to see a prophet? Who was that? Who was that prophet? John the Baptist. In another, I think it was Luke that said, I have already sent the prophet Elias. When Luke was giving his account. But read, let's read the account of uh, Matthew again. But what went ye out for to see a prophet? 